All right. A further a further word um, on that, just to continue where we were about the civilian aspect and the because beginners need to understand this. The civilian aspect, which is the church triumphant, that the church has already triumphed because of its head. You understand? Because of Yeshua, because of the Moshiach, because of Christ. Because Christ already has won the victory. You understand? Now when we come into Christ, we are saved by that grace, but we have to work out our salvation. We have to grow up to him. You understand? We have to be mature. That means we have to weed out the old things, but we have to use the, these two rods that the L or O J or the L and the J represents. We have to use what Ephraim and Manasseh represents. You understand? Affirmation and denial based upon that which is Situm. That which is Situm. That which is the Pi Tum in ancient Egypt. The Pi Tum or the Pitum is a Situm. That which is perfect. That which is absolute. In fact, very interestingly enough, in the Shema, which every newcomer, you understand, um, every newbie, so to speak, in the house of God, in the house of Christ, but especially in the church of Rastafari, must understand, you understand, is these aspects of affirmation and denial and have to utilize these, especially in the thought, you understand, in the mind. That's why it says be born again from above. And Paul, Hawaii Apollos, also speaks about what is our acceptable service. So you can see how the various teachings are not just a good verse over here, a good word over there, or something you, you, you might like over there, but really don't like this part over there, because you probably don't understand how it comes together in its holistic, its complete, or its fitum, in the fullness, the fitum. You understand? It's not the fullness, but it's when the Shema says, love the Lord thy God, Let's go back to Deuteronomy 6 for a moment. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. This is the word of witness. And it's in this way that we take or affirm our word of witness. Because if you look at this symbol of my hand right here, and you look at the Ahaz, or what we call the Ethiopic number for one, it's the very same symbol. So when we say Besama'a, we were meant to produce a hadu, a hadu, amlak, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one God, the, 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 the triune is in oneness, it is in unity. An interesting thing we notice is about when the Catholics, the Romanists, say, um, in nomine Padre, Sile, Spirito Sancti, you know, when they say their kind of Besama'a, they often don't say one God. I noticed that. So that means they keep it on the Trinity. They keep it on the Trinity, that they really worship the Trinity but don't recognize the Trinity, the explanation, you understand, or a revelation of the oneness, you understand, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's just a little point aside. But here in the great commandment, it says, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, according to King James Version, Deuteronomy Six and four, and this is our word of witness. Like the Mohammedans, who might say um, "La ilaha illallah," you understand? They say that there's no god but God. This is a, a way they affirm that they are Muslim. We affirm that we are Hebrews, or some would affirm that they are Jews. In other words, in modern Orthodox Judaism, Judaica, by the same very affirmation. So this we share in common. You understand? Here. You understand, O Israel, the Lord our God, you understand, is one, is one. You over us? But now the mystery of that one God is the Trinity, is the triunity, which, which always was there. And Yoel Natan, we, we mentioned his, his name before, Yoel Natan did a very good book called The Jewish Trinity. You might find, um, a, you know, I think you can look at it, read it on Google, on, on the Google Books for free. I think he has a whole book up there. He also did Moon O Theism, a book Moon O Theism on, on, on the Mohammedan, ancient Sabian, the religious. It, it's very interesting and in many ways it's very accurate, you understand, from what we've been able to vet and verify. But the Jewish Trinity is very a very important recommended book for those who are Hebrews and wonder why we as Hebrews still speak of Trinity. 
Because there's some folks who sometimes make some little um, uh, comments, sometimes scurious, you know, but anyway, be that as it may, you know, about, oh, y'all are idolaters, it's about the Trinity, Trinity, say, blah, 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 right? And sometimes when we engage some of them, most of them don't know Hebrew or their Hebrew is not very good from any vantage point, neither from the Orthodox Jewish vantage point. At least they can learn, you know, the Orthodox Jewish way. And at least you can then have something to, to, to base what you're saying on, or you can step up and learn it eye and eye way, you understand. But if you don't have either or, you know what I'm saying, you're just working with a... A, a, a European interpretation of what you want to call your Judaism. And there's a lot of black Hebrews and Israelites that come from that perspective. And we pray for them. You know what I'm saying? Because they think they get it by their zealous, zealousness, like the old Israelites. They still are at fault in that same way as the old Israelites, who Paul talks about elsewhere. But now the fifth tomb is where it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. It is interesting that the word perfect in the New Testament is actually the sense of with all, with all. Here in Deuteronomy, or read the Dagim, chapter 6, verse 4, right? Verse 4, where it says, He O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord Love the Lord thy God with all, when it says with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thy physical, all thy might. That means your might, your strength, and that means the strength of your wealth as well. You should serve God with your mammon. Do not serve mammon, you understand, or worship mammon as another God. It sounds simpler than, you know, if you've lived on this rock a while, it sounds sim easier, you know what I'm saying, it's easier, excuse me, said than done, it seems, in this world, you understand? But there is a path out of chaos, you understand? There is a path out of chaos, and the path out of chaos, the way, the truth, and the life is the Moshiach, you understand, Yeshua, known as Jesus Christos, Geotachin, Jesus Christos, known as Jesus or Jesus Christ. The fault with the Jesus Christ sayers is that they tend to whitewash the image. And if they haven't thought that that whitewash is false and recognized and stood against that folly, then other things probably crept in, you understand, into their doctrine. So we, 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 do not, we don't recommend that, but we definitely... Um, will be a witness to Jesus Christos in spite of those who have preached him in pretense and falsely. You understand? He is true and let every man be a liar in that sense. But the idea of fitum means absolute. The idea of fitum means perfect. Let's understand that the idea of fitum means absolute. The idea of fitum means perfect. So when people say, um... There's nothing perfect. That's a denial of fitum. That's a denial of the absolute. That's a denial of the true God and the God of truth. And therefore, that's, that's an outright lie. You say, well, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. And to forgive is divine. The, the, the earth is human and to forgive is divine. Errare est humanum. 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 Or errare humanum est. Alexander Pope wrote that in Essays on Criticism. Don't throw that in my face as though it's some divine wisdom. It's a latter-day Eurocentric, um, you know, excuse kind of thing they use. Like, for them, it's like to err as human. Whenever they do anything, it's always to err as human. Forgive it, forgive it. And then you look at your white Jesus or Caesar Borgias, and you look at the white person offending, you, you forgive it. But then when the black man does it, your fellow brother or sister does it, you can't forgive him until you, you die, and even in hell you're going to be trying to torture the person more. You, you know what I mean? So that, those sayings, like to err is human, to forgive is divine, it is not Bible. It is not divinely inspired. Even the writer of this was not, didn't make any pretense to it. They were just trying to make philosophy. They were just trying to make a, a nice-sounding argument, basically. So, 
Let's understand the fifth tomb as the absolute. The fifth tomb is the perfect. When Christ says, Be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, he's referring to this same, this same idea, the same word, fifth tomb. When um, he says, um, when it says that prophecy has been fulfilled, tefetzimah, you understand, tefetzimah, it has been perfected, it has become pi tomb. In other words, that which has been said by the af, the fifth, the af, the pi, you understand, now has been tomb, has been fulfilled, has been completed. You understand, is a completion. The idea of perfect really means complete. You understand, if somebody says do one, two, three, and that's it. And well, when you do one, two, three, that should be it. You understand? And that's the idea of perfect, complete, you understand, in its true sense. This other idea of perfect confuses a lot of us and confuses a lot of you all. So you all will say on one hand, nobody's perfect, and then you'll wonder why your version of Christianity is not working. Well, how can you say nobody is perfect and then the master says be perfect? So you're saying, he said be perfect, but he's just saying that just to say it. It didn't have no meaning. No, you, my non-friend, are the one without meaning, you understand, or who are, who are, who's being meaningless. So we say that there, and then we want to connect one other element, one other aspect to this right here where it says um, in uh, chapter 12 of Romans, the Christian life and the, and the service, the consecration, which means the holiness, the the Yetakedes, the Mekdes, the consecration, the Kiddus, it says, I beseech, I'm begging you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Ha Elohim, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy Kiddus, acceptable to God, to Egizyari Herlotu Subhat, to Yahweh, to Yahweh Eloheinu, Baruchu which is your reasonable service. And then he goes on in verse 2 that says, And be not conformed to this world, or to worldly Christianity, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this once again backs up that it's a mental thing. You understand, there's a lot of Christians that think it's a blessing to be ignorant. You understand, it's a joy to be ignorant. It's a joy to be, I don't know, um, there's no, that, that's, that's, that's a lie. You know, they talk about um, ignorance is bliss. This is another devilish saying. And a lot of us, by programming in this world, you understand, we have put this into our mind state, and when we're ever in doubt or in the intellectual mental corner, we will, we will spit that out. That's, that's just, just like saying, this is my prison bar. That's another one of my prison bars. These are holding me here. You have to break down those barriers in the Moshiach, in Christ. You have to submit yourself. You understand? It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, that you may prove. You understand? This which I teach and I share and I communicate and to, the, to my brothers and sisters in Dekam as I'm martyred. It's not what um, I have not proven. If somebody has been proven, I'll say they say this or it's said here or there. You understand? But that which, that which I, I know and I communicate is that which has been proven to me. And though I may present all my proof, you're not going to know it. You understand? Until you do it. You understand? Prove what is that good and acceptable and what perfect will. The point of this right here, Romans 12 and 2, is to link with this. Romans 12 and 2, it says that ye may prove what is that good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect what will of God, of God, of the absolute, that perfect will of God. So, let's get back to Timothy for a moment, um, and let's also continue. We're still continuing the first step that a beginner in truth must take, and that is to set up a new, you have to set up a, a new world order in your mind. But this new world order is not the worldly order that you already conform to, but it's God's order. First you, have to, first you have to become comfortable with the thought, the idea, before you can manifest anything. You understand? You have to, become, you have to change, your, change your mind, the metanoia. Now, here in First Timothy chapter 3, um, 
I guess it's best just to go from the very first verse so you can get this in context. It says, this is a true saying. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now, it's interesting that further on, he will refer to something called, the, in the old King James Version, the bishop prick. The bishop's prick, or the bishop prick. Now, people would go off on that. But anyway, it means the staff. That staff of the bishop. And that staff of the bishop is basically the shepherd's rod. The shepherd's rod right here. That is for control, for leadership. You understand? But there's also the discipline. You understand? What has happened is that discipline has fallen by the wayside. And, um, well, the evidence is here, there, and everywhere. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, uh, vigilant, sober, and of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, like filthy money, genza, not be money, 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 but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, not one who's given to brawling, given to being argumentative. You understand? One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravitas or gravity. And in brackets, parentheses here, though it's not parentheses in the Ethiopic, it says, verse 5, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? How shall, if he can't rule his own house, how is he going to take care of the house of God? And, and this is a very important meditation here. There's a lot that's embedded in this particular teaching, and I'm sure ones may have questions about this or that, but our main verse is coming up. We just wanted to give you that for the context. Verse 6, not a novice. Not a novice. Now, let's see if we get the met uh, deduce. Um, um, I'm hard to say. Not a not remember the book of the seven seals here, right? But we have it in English and Amharic as well, in, in, in a parallel Bible um, version. You understand? Know English and the Amharic. And ones uh, can go to www.org um, forward slash forward slash books to look at some of the available, some of the new and available um, um, study materials and reference materials that we have on our um, LOJ, LOJsociety.org, just click on the books, um, the, books uh, the books link. Now here in verse 6 it says, here in verse 6 it says, um, but not a novice, it says, Betibit, Betibit Tenefto, Bediablo Safford, in Diawedic, Adis Christian Aihun. Adis Christian Aihun. In other words, a bishop, and just so you can uh, see this right here, you understand? Right? This is the verse, this is the area, right? In the Met of Kedus of Negus Neges, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Bible of His Imperial Majesty. It says that he not be a Adis. Not a novice, not an Adis Met, or here it says Adis Christian. Adis Met is what we call newcomer, not just a newcomer, or a novice. And you get this a lot in the world, that a lot of folks will say, I got saved and I'm going to do my own church. Wow. I feel sorry for those who are, because you just, you don't even know the Bible yet. You don't even know really what you should know. And the Bible itself says that even if you feel that's calling, if the calling is true, it's not saying just run out there and do it. It's saying to, to, to learn, you understand, to study and show yourself approved because the Holy Spirit doesn't contradict itself. You understand, it's, it's you or it, it might be me or others that contradict. Let every man be a liar, but, but Jah, Rastafari, is true. Now, it says that not a novice, least being filled with the pride or with pride, he falleth into the condemnation of Diablos. And devil means a slanderer or a liar. Devil is another way of saying a slanderer or a liar. So that means if he's a newcomer, 
that pride lifts him up, and now he's so caught up in pride, he's a liar because he doesn't know that really this is the teaching, this is what the Bible, he hasn't learned the word, you understand, has been guided by the Holy Spirit, but he's going to misrepresent, and when you correct him, you're going to be so full up in pride and not even be able to go to the source or be twisting, misinterpreting the source. So it says, not, not a novice. Then it goes on in verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. In other words, he got to have a good report. It's like if he was out there in the world, even his friends who used to be rolling or her friends rolling with her or him or her out there in the world have to say, they just changed. I mean, something different about them. And for some brothers and sisters, you know, I've actually heard this from other people, even sometimes family, very pleasingly, like, wow, the person has become like a new a new person. So that even shows you this per what it means by having a good report of them which are without, least, least unless he fall into reproach and the sneer, into reproach and the sneer, it says, of Diablos. So there's two things. There is first the condemnation, right? It first speaks on the condemnation of the devil, right? And then nextly it speaks on it speaks on the sneer of the devil in verse six and seven. So it's important that we remind the newcomers, also are new to this, that um um remembering the send that um keeping the Sendbet, keeping the Sabbath holy, the sabbatical study, the Torah readings, you understand the Torah studies, get into a good Bible study or Bible fellowship, but most of all to pray and to ask God the Father in the name of the Yeshua Christus Yeshua to guide them, to send the Holy Spirit to guide them, you understand, to even guide them to whom and who they should go to if they, if they must or if they go to ones or if, if ones and ones come along, pray on it and really develop a relationship with the same God that sustains your life. That's the God that we're speaking of, the God that sustains our lives. You understand, the real creator, you understand, according to his word. So it warns us about two things, the condemnation of Diablos and the reproach, falling into reproach, you understand, and the sneer. So pride leads to the condemnation. And falling now into reproach, you understand, leads to that sneer, that trap of the of Diablos. Likewise, must the deacons, and this is where we, I think, left off in the earlier part, um, where we were speaking about the civilian aspect and the military aspect of the church, because there is the church triumphant. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Google it. The church triumphant. Look up the history of the, the related meanings, where it comes from, how it was interpreted like that, and you'll find it's very old. It's a very old um, um, teaching that goes back to the beginning. The church triumphant. You understand? Or the Moa Andesa, the M Negeta Yehuda. The Moa Yeshua. The Moa Yesus. You understand? Then you have the church militant. You understand? There's a militancy of the church where it says to fight the good fight. You understand? Even in spiritual warfare, there is a military discipline that is important to understand and overstand both oneself as well as the enemy. If you don't, then you will fail and fall. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not, not double-minded, not double-tongued, not given too much wine. You know what I'm saying? Not given too much wine. And for us as Rastafari, we have to understand that as well as not given too much herb, too. You know, there's herb, just like there's wine for the Christian, but not given too much of it. Like, you know, like even some so called, we say, some good Aishans. You have some some eyes that just smoke, 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 but nothing, nothing really good come out of them from all the smoke. You, you know what I mean? Even the, 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 the good herbs start to smell funny when they're blowing it out. And you'd be like, why are you just consuming? You're just like a consumer. You understand? Because they're not in the, they haven't set themselves right. You understand? And, and it's like the drunkard or the alcoholic. Mm -hmm. There's no moderation and there's no discipline. So when we talk about sacramental marijuana or herbs used sacramentally, one of the key things is the moderation 
You understand? The key things is the moderation as well as the discipline. You understand? The order and the way of the King of Kings, Christ and his kingly character, the King of Kings and his Christ, is about moderation and discipline. And we even see that reflected here within um, 1 Timothy chapter 3. At verse 8, it says, likewise, the deacons. Now, what is the diakones? Diakones, the deacon or the diakon is, it means one who is of ten, one who is responsible for ten. It's like the title of corporal. In the military, a corporal used to, in the old sense of military, you understand, different militaries have done different things. You know, like now they have um, so-called openly gay or homosexual people in the military, and it seems that that won't have a, a, an a, 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 a effect. They obviously have not learned from history. Whenever um, societies were, were not just openly homosexual, but had homosexuality becoming so, so grossly like the, the norm, you understand? Even a lot of people just, I think, being homosexual, not because they were born that way, but because of worldly material advantage. They would give anything. In other words, idolatry and materialism can get that bad, where one would even do those things just, even not like it, not do it because they were born that way, but do it for advantage in society. But whenever societies have gotten like that, whether Rome or Greece, these societies have experienced more or less a fall sooner or later, a fall. So that's also another clear sign, you know, um, when they're giving in marriage and, and all of that stuff. But the deacon in the true military order means one of ten. One of ten. In other words, one who's over ten. In other words, in a true sense, when you have a deacon, that means that they are responsible even for others like them, other deacons, or that they are responsible. Say, for example, if you have a church of a hundred people, you understand? Say you have 100 people in the church, a local church, for example. You should have at least maybe one deacon, you understand, for that average of, that means others who work along with that deacon to work along with the bishop, and bishop basically means a shepherd. So the bishop's prick is basically this shepherd's rod, this shepherd's staff. In older Christianity, they usually use these as symbols. But nowadays, a lot of these things have gotten forgotten, and if you look at a lot of churches, they're using some crazy satanistic and demonic kind of um, um, logos and, and sigils that have absolutely nothing to do with Christianity or even the basic true interpretation of Christianity. And, you know, by those signs, you should know them. But we're going through this to say, okay, not given too much wine, like we should not be given too much herb, not greedy of filthy lucre, not just greedy as to make money, like even we recognize in this ministry, we have to do something about our economy, not just m me and my personal house, you understand, although that's a consideration, but not before the church, not before the main, you know, the main thing. You understand the main thing, which is God in Christ, because God in Christ, he owns all of it. He controls all the silver and gold, and everything is his. You understand? Even the, the hearts and the minds of people are in his hand. There's a verse in the Bible that says that when you do that which pleases him, even your enemies, even your enemies are at peace with you. You understand? Even your enemies are at peace with you. That is true fitum. That is true perfection. You understand? That is true perfection. Some say that even Christ, um, the Romans didn't want to believe in mess of Christ, really. It was, it was his own people. You understand? His own so-called people or the, or, or, the, or the black devils among those Jews. You understand? That did what they did. You understand? To the Moshiach. You understand? So be that as it may, we're leading up to this verse, to verse 9. You understand? Verse 9 where it says, Holding the mystery... So a bishop as well as a deacon must both hold the mishtir, the mystery, which is based on the ancient mutos or, or mythos, the mythos or the mutos, which is the rule of mystery, the ancient mythology, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Now you used to wonder why is it in a pure conscience? Why didn't you say holding the mystery in your conscience? But for many reasons, it says pure conscience, because when we start to talk about some of these ancient Egyptian mysteries, we have to talk about mature things. 
We got to talk about real things. We got to talk about sexuality. We have to talk about um, different things that that this modern society, being so technologically advanced, is like almost emotionally and and psychologically retarded. You, you know, in 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 a certain way. You know, what I mean that they use um, what, 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 what they call it again. Um, hmm. They use subliminal suggestion, right? They use subliminal suggestion to sell their products, to sell their things. Babylon does this, confusion and chaos. They use it in the cartoons for the children, and yet we see behind it is talking about mature sexual themes that at no point of really the educational system in the West do they really educate children, you understand, for these things. Especially in nowadays societies, worse than before, at least before people would see a an animal give birth to another animal and would even figure it out for themselves. So, well, you know, they have eyes, nose, they're creatures like us, they bleed, and that's how they give birth? Okay, that's probably how we give birth. You know, they would learn it from the nature world, the animal world, just like the primitive peoples did. However, nowadays, since people get their food from the store, or McDonald's, or idol shop like that, that's an idol, not Ito. We need to change that. Ito, which is called Migab or something like that. But anyway, um, in a lot of these idol shops, because that's what McDonald's, Mickey D, the rest of my idols, they have certain symbols, certain sigils that have very demonic orientation relations. And sometimes you will tell them, your symbol means this from this and that, and they will respond to you saying, yes, it does. We know. That's the point. So they're basically saying, yes, we're, we're devil worshippers, and that's the point. You wonder why the children are so obese. They're like lambs being fattened up for the slaughter. They're like lost sheep, and, and it's amazing people don't want to get it, but then they don't even know the animal world. So if you say sheep, they don't understand what's a sheep. You understand what's a sheep, actually. You know what I mean? They would say that Christ was a sheep. No, he was a ram because the ram had is a male one, usually with the horns. Not always, but usually with the horns. So when you're talking about this um, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, it's important that we touch on this because... When we initiated this, we talked about this. We have to squeeze this in right here as the mystery school. The mystery school or the mystery, this is the mystery shul. The mystery shul or the mystery school of the Mushiach, of, of Christos, of Christ and his kingly character. This is the mystery school of Christ. So people will say, oh, mystery, you're dealing with blah, 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 blah. And you say, what are you? I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Okay. So there's no mystery there? Some of them who are so ignorant, they would tell you no. They would say, no, there's no mystery there. And then you get the Bible and say, what about this right here? And they would look at maybe if they do know the Bible, they look at Babylon. And they'll say Babylon is mystery Babylon. That's why we don't deal with mystery. Don't you understand? Mystery is being used there as an adjective. You know what I'm saying? Which is not talking about what mystery is not saying good or evil. You know what I'm saying? Mystery is saying that this is something that is a secret or not easily or readily understood on its superficial or surface or common colloquial value. You understand? In the common way that there's more to it in a sense than meets the eye. You understand? And one has to be initiated. Somebody has to start you off, you understand, and hopefully start you off properly to understanding this. But we want to point it out as an evidence, both to connect with that new beginner, that beginner point, and as an evidence for what we are referring to, speaking of, and saying, in fact, in verse, um, in fact, you know what, before we leave off at, at, at the 9 right here, let's take it to the 16, where it says, um, and we will continue with the Ephraim and Manasseh. You understand? And the beginner. Because we're still at that part where it says the first step that a beginner, a Adis Christian, or Adis Met, or Adis Rastafari, you understand, in truth, takes is to set up a new and better state of conscience. You understand? Of, of consciousness. You understand? Of consciousness, actually. Based upon the absolute. Basically, the consciousness is the Lebona to use the Ethiopic word that relates to consciousness, is the labona. But the root of it is the lib, is the heart. 
This is why they'll say that heart refers to the mind, but to use what we know of psychology today, because psychology is very well refined in some of its basic elementals. And in refined psychology, that would be the consciousness. And the consciousness, the word that we use for that will be the labona, you understand, or labona, right? And so it goes on to say, and let these also first be proved. In other words, let the deacon, let the bishop be proved. You understand? Let the deacon be proved. And let these aspects that they hold, the mystery of the faith and the pure conscience, let, th let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Then when they are found blameless, with, with no blame, not, they may have personal things with people in the community, you understand, but that may be about maybe the other person's wrong. You understand? Or something that they got into before they was born again and they repented of that or whatever. And it's not a high crime in that sense. It's, it's like, it's not a felony spiritually. It's a, more like a, a misdemeanor kind of charge. You understand? It's not a felonious charge. You know what I mean? Um, but once they're found blameless, they can move on. Then it says, even so must their wives be great. Must their wives be serious? Even I will, and, and this is, now this is what's very, very serious about this. It's not just what we are, but it's what our spouses are, because that in some way reflects, you understand, on who we are. And some of us who have actually grown in consciousness, and it's not to blame so-called other person or the woman or the, or the, 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 even baby mothers or anything like that, though there's probably blame there, but, but that's not what we're speaking about here. We're just talking about us. As, as the window, which as the males, at that level of consciousness or the level that what we knew was true and still what we had to learn, you understand, we ask both for the others, you understand, in the name of Yeshua to forgive I and I, you understand, I mean, overall, because it don't make no sense trying to whittle down little points when you already recognize there's enough points there that says that you were wrong. You understand, now you want to try to, you know, split atoms, split hairs on it. It doesn't really make any, it's kentu, kentu, hulu, kentu, no. You understand, it's kentu to do that, it's vain to do that. But it says, even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things, especially all things that pertain to the Beta Christian. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. Now, some say, Wow, this one wife thing, what does that mean? You was talking about polygamy and, and, and poly, you know, um, polyandry before. That obviously means that um, something is something's wrong with what you're saying. No, it means that one needs to understand the context of things. You see what I'm saying? The one wife, first of all, the bishop, actually, if, if, if you will know it, you understand? Actually, if you will know it, does refer to that wife. Just like in ancient times, the kings had that, that throne wife or the first wife, you understand? And then due to various society, social situations, there were other wives, but they were not at that first level, that first order. Now, some would say, oh, no, you're splitting hairs here, but we can go through the fits and the guess with you, as we've gone through before, and show that it is a conditional. It depends on the condition of the individual society. It's not out of man's lust or man's desire. Unfortunately, brothers, I've gone there, I've looked at these things, and I can't find no justification that works out to his righteousness. You understand? That proves that just what the man wants to, he's like Solomon and all that. That's, that's vain. That's vain. We have to grow up from that and put it in its proper, its proper context. But the real one wife is the church. The true one wife is that church, you know what I'm saying, is that church, and not just the woman in the church, you see, that's following the physical carnal side of it, but spiritually, it's all of those who are members of that church, of that community, you know what I'm saying, he is in a role of Christ, he is acting as Christ, so as Christ loved the church, and the church is his bride, you understand, so he is looking at the sanctity of that community, not just the building, but of those who make up, you understand, the, the body of, of the body politic of the Christian. As for us, the body politic of the Ras de Fari. But even if that is so, it shows there's a higher order for the bishop and the deacons 
than there is for the other members of the community. And say everybody in that community knows so is talking about. Because you have to remember where the community was at already in that first century A.D. You understand that first century A.D., there were ones who had what we would call more than two wives, the patriarchs included. You understand? But even they, when they came to those roles and responsibilities, even David, though it was due to some of his own er error, he may have had seven wives before, and maybe they were of his house or his responsibility within the community, but Bersabe, Bathsheba, became as his one wife, even Solomon. His true one wife was the Queen of Sheba. And I often I ask myself, I meditate and say, well, how come he did not go and visit her? How come he didn't just pick up and say, well, I'm going to go visit her for a while? I guess the political situation wasn't stable in Israel, and he already got caught up in so many things that he, he just never did that. But let's move on right here. It's basically that, that the qualifications are higher for a bishop as well as for the deacons. They be husbands of one wife. Notice it's saying that they all be husbands, all of them of one wife, but it says they be husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree. A good degree. This is a degree, a degree within the community. And a great boldness in the faith which is in Christos Iesus, which is in the Moshiach, Yeshua, or Iesus, or um, Yehoshua. These things write I to you, hoping to come to thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself, in the house of God. So in the house of God, in the true house of Rastafari, what we must learn as well at the beginner level is a sense of um, etiquette, a, 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 a way of behaving. How do we behave? And not from a false sense of, of what tradition may tell you or you may interpret by your own interpretation of tradition, but from the teaching of his majesty and the teaching here in the B-I-B-L-E. So we should know how we ought to behave ourselves in the house of God, which is, now it's explained the house of God is what? Is the church of the living God. And the church is as that she, as that bride of Christ, the pillar and the ground of the truth. So what is the pillar? And the, so when everybody be talking about truth, 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 this is truth, that is truth, they're misusing truth if they're not referring to the, as the Bible says, the, the pillar, the pillar and the ground. But it's the pillar and the ground of this particular, the pillar and the ground of this particular um, reality or truth, the church of the what? Living God. Not the dead God, you understand, but the living God, you understand? And so when we're using these symbologies, we look at the symbologies not in a dead aspect like old dusty archaeology, but in the living sense, you understand, in which they embody the living ideas, the living principles, you understand? So these are symbols, but behind the symbols, the symbols refer to important um for lack of a better word, precepts and principles and, 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 and teaching. Now, verse 16 ends right here. And we're taking this portion of the teaching to verse 16. Bamarinya, we want to sum this up with them hard. It says, Egeziabi Rinim, Bememsel, Mishtir Yaletir Talak, no. Besiga Yetagelete, Bemenfes Yes Edeke, Le Me Laikt. Yetaye, the Ahiza, Yetesebeke, the Orem, Yetamene, the Kubur Yarge, the Kubur Yarge, the Kubur Yarge. It says, and without controversy, for the British people out there, without controversy or controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Now it's interesting and please make a note of this because this is all beginner um, Rastafari discipleship beginner. These are beginner level teachings right here. 
And the word I want you to make a note of is godliness, and then do your own study on this. The word godliness, Bamarinya, in the Royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus, is two words, two words, when in English it's a compound word, in the Amharic is two words. One is the name, the Ethiopic, the pre-creational name, the pre-worldly name of God, and we have to say, and Yahweh and Ha Elohim, the true God. And it's the word Yememsel, 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 Mishtir. Now, Mishtir, Yememsel, Mishtir, so it's actually it's three words, these three words. And God resembling the mystery of resembling God. Wow, that's deep. The mystery of resembling God? These are things that we are to learn, the mystery of resembling God? Is this what we are to learn? Well, this is what the Bible is teaching right here. That is what's really behind this word in the English, godliness. Now, when you compare it to what is known or what is thought to be the truth of godliness in today's world and today's um. Um, post-imperial Ethiopia, then you will really begin to recognize where the problem is and where the great challenge is, you understand, is that first of all, ones have lost sight. The ignorance of the soul is its sin, as Hermes would say. Hermes Trismegistus, trice blessed, as he would say, the ignorance of the soul, like, is its destruction, which is to say, is its sin as well. You understand? But here... In this mystery of godliness, a couple of a couple of things are pointed out. It says, first of all, the mystery of um, resembling God, yale ter ter, without controversy, yale ter ter, like without any kind of dispute, without doubt, in a sense, without any kind of doubting, to say, don't even dispute about it, because there's no doubt about this. You understand? Agodi. You understand? There's no doubt about this, about the true God. Talak no, talak no. It is, it is, it, this is great. This means this is important. This means this is wana wana. It has a wana wana alama. You understand? It has a, a, a very important aim. There's a centrality to what Hawadi Apollos is explaining to his disciple Timotheos at this point of scripture in First Timothy chapter three, Mi'raf source at verse 16, Kuter Asara Siddis. Because in your Bibles, it's all paragraphical, but it's really laid out here, Bamarinya, in a prose sense, in a prose sense, as one, two, three, four, five, six verses, six verses, where it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It says, one, God was manifest in the flesh. Now, this, this really is something that ones need to understand. Because Christ taught us that as it is with the Father, so is it with the Son. And where modern day Christianity is, is, a, is, a, is, a, lot, is, is a lot retarded. And not, not retarded to be mean or talk about like, uh, you know, I mean they're mentally handicapped because of the lies. The lies mentally handicap them, you, you know. But where it's, it's, it's retarded in that sense is that it says that, yes, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ walked the earth. And then they made up this whole eschatology based here and there on a little bit of uh, misinterpreted scripture or a word, a phrase here and there, like the rapture thing. Mm -hmm. What they don't recognize is that the rapture is a spiritual rapture. In fact, this is what I, uh, my men, and, and, and Domino, you understand, and Domino Hoot, you understand, as I admit it, you understand, um, the rapture is happening now. I mean, right now, the real rapture is happening. Because according to the Bible, it says we will meet him in the air, in the ether. When we understand all of that metaphysically, we begin to understand the ether and the air is a spiritual consciousness. 
you understand, a spiritual consciousness. Even these teachings are reaching some of those who are in this spiritual consciousness where, where it's a rapture. And can you imagine this effect, the effect that teachings like this and others the like have in the whole global consciousness of the lost sheep and of humanity? And this is one of the reasons why we're seeing all these signs with the hailstones, with the storms, with the famines, the wars, the rumors of wars, and, and all the signs, all the 16 major signs are being seen here and there. Some of them are even happening more and more increasingly together at the same time. And we said that when it increases in frequency, you understand, and also happening consecutively, you understand, then we begin to understand how near we are to this prophetic time. You understand, and hopefully, you understand, we are prepared. You understand, uh, hopefully we are spiritually prepared in our head and our heart to say in our soul. You understand, because forget about the body, forget about the material things. You understand, if one has already lost their soul. You know what I mean? If you lost your soul, the body, the material things really don't, don't really mean a hill of beans. A hill of beans are really of more value to somebody who has a, 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 a heart and soul in that sense. Mm. So here, we're is speaking about the mystery of resembling God. This is the mystery of resembling God, and we can safely say and accurately prove with evidence, a variety of evidence that is imperial majesty. Moa Andesa Ze'im Negeta Yehuda Ketamawi Haila Selase has fulfilled, you understand, and is a fulfillment of that mystery of God sealing up what Christ prophesied about in John's Gospel, chapter 16, where he actually foresaw and was prophesying of the Father, you understand, coming, the Fatherhood of God manifesting itself through the Son of Man. And we know that Son of Man is Lich Teferi, Lich Teferi, born, according to the Western calculation of time, in, 18, in 1892. That's why it says that beware that day doesn't come as a thief in the night. You know, that day and the hour doesn't come as a thief in the night. Because we're talking about what happened in 1892, 1930, some other significant dates such as that. And these things have already happened. And we're now in 2011. And still some people are just learning about it. You know, so the mercy of God is also what is forbearing, what is keeping this kind of so-called Babylonian matrix going because there are more souls to be saved. He's not willing that any soul should perish. You understand? And we're looking at the soul. We're not looking at judging by color and race and, and complexion and all those things. Those things are not the first things. They're not the main things. They're not the lasting things anyway. Mm. But for us as black people, we have to whom more is given, more is required. You see what I'm saying? So this is why our road has been particularly rocky as a particular people. If we are the chosen people in a particular and a peculiar in a peculiar way, then um we can also be one of the most cursed of all people as well. But we're gonna pick up on a mystery of God in the in the next part of this. All right, stay tuned. Shalom.